Welcome back again to Power Director Made Simple. Today's video will be an exploration of the feature for 365 users called AI Image Generator using the text prompt method. Later, I'll do a follow up video using the face plus text prompt method. Now I'll start by clicking on Image Generator on the left side and then text prompt. A new window opens. At the top, it asks you to enter a text description of the image that you want to generate. I don't know exactly what to type or how it should appear, so I can click on the Inspiration button, and I'll get a number of images that have a text prompt and style already built into them. If any of them get selected, then that text prompt and style gets assigned to your input. You can also use one of your own images to create the description and style. For example, I'll click on Get Prompt from Image. And then I'll click in the middle of the box, which allows me to browse for an image. A File Explorer window will open, and I'll navigate through my photos until I can find one that interests me. I'll use the one that shows an infant in a high chair. And then I'll click on Open. The image now appears in the window, so I'll click on Generate to create the text prompt in style. I wish they hadn't used the word Generate here because this Generate does not create an image. All it does is generate the text for the text prompt. And this part does not cost you any credits. The server analyzes the image and comes up with a long description. I'll click on Use the Prompt, and you can now see that long description appear in the area where it says to enter the description. But I'm not going to use any of this. Instead, I want something new. So I'm going to type in Red Race Car. Comma, rain drenched. Now my next option is to select an aspect ratio. I'll stick with the 16 to 9. And the next option is to choose a style. Now this is optional, but it greatly influences what the images will look like. Even this option is divided into two sections either portrait or scenery, based on your descriptive text. A race car is not really a portrait, so I'll choose scenery, and then perhaps realistic. I could try to get fancy and choose something like anime or perhaps neon. The only way to know what it would look like is to hit the generate button for any of those style choices. But, aha, this is where you can end up chewing through a lot of credits. Each regeneration of the same description will cost another three credits. There is no such thing as add people in the background or change the color from red to blue without costing an additional regeneration and three more credits. Fortunately, 365 users get 100 free credits each month, and you can get an additional three credits per day if you click on the little gift icon at the top of the text prompt window. Now finally, it's time to hit the real generate button at the bottom. A small window will open explaining why this costs credits and you have the opportunity to turn it off so you'll never see that window again. In the large image window to the right, it will eventually count up to 100 and display four potential images at the bottom. We will then give you the opportunity to select which one will be downloaded and added to your library. You don't really have to select one right now. Click on the My Creations button towards the upper right. A new window will open and display all four images of every attempt to generate images based on your text prompt. I'll select one of the red race cars and then select Download. 
It tells me it will be found in the AI-generated images category on the main editing window just under My Media. But watch me take this one step deeper into this rabbit hole. Did you also notice the small text that says Open File Location? When you do this, Windows File Explorer will open to see backslash users, backslash public, backslash cyberlink, backslash downloaded AI images. Well, that was mighty nice of Cyberlink to tell the users exactly where the image is really saved on your storage drive. However, you should know me by now that I would never be satisfied with just knowing where that one image has been saved. What about the other three? Do they just disappear, or are they saved somewhere else on my drive? So here is something that advanced users might find handy. If you're not comfortable using File Explorer and poking around at things in the special users folders, then the following may not be for you. I'm going to use File Explorer, and starting from the same location given to us by Cyberlink, I'll navigate just one folder up in the links by clicking on the word Cyberlink at the top. There I can see the previous folder, Downloaded AI Images, but right underneath that is a similar one called Downloaded AI Images Creation. I'll double click that one to open it. There are two folders inside here, one named face plus text to image and the other text to image. These are the folders where the AI image creation tool will store the images. Because I use the text to image prompt, I'll double click on that folder to open it. Now I see multiple folders, all given a timestamp based on the year, month, date, and system time. Let's open the last one in the list, which would be the most current one that I just did with the red race car. Inside, I find all four images that were created. So all four were already downloaded to my drive. And that previous option to select one to download was misleading. All that option does is to add that one selected image to the media library under the category of AI generated images. Now here is the magic part. If you wanted to save all four images to a special place on your storage drive, maybe for use much later or in another application, all you have to do now would be to select those images, right click and select copy. And then paste them somewhere else on your drive where you can access them later as needed. There is no need to use PowerDirector to supposedly download each image and make it part of the AI generated images library. You all can thank me later for that little tip. I'll close the File Explorer window for now. I'll click OK to close this small download window. I'll close this larger download window, which brings me to the My Creations window. I'll close that. I'm now at the actual text prompt tool for creating an image. I'll close it also. Back on the main editing window, if I click on My Media on the left side menu, there is now a new category called AI Generated Images. When I click on that, I can see one image of a red race car that I selected to be downloaded and added to my library. Now, a new problem arises. PowerDirector apparently left out any means of selecting any of the images in deleting from disk. In other words, maybe you got tired of seeing that same red race car week after week in your media library and you want to remove it somehow. How can that be done? 
if you were to jump back into the My Creations window that is part of the image generator, can you delete any of those images shown there? But would that also remove that image from the media library? Well, I have the answers for you, but it gets just a little bit complicated and perhaps a little geeky. Unfortunately, it would make this video excessively long, so I'm going to save it for a short video to come up next. And following the next video about how to delete these AI image creations, I'll do another video explaining the text plus face AI image creation procedure. So don't touch that dial. There's still lots to come. Once again, thanks to everybody for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. If you haven't already subscribed to my channel, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, which will make sure that you get a notification every time I post a new video. I'm expecting Santa Claus to bring me up to 1 million subscribers this Christmas.